All right, imagine you've got this super powerful engine, your for loop, and you want it to do exactly what you tell it, no guesswork. That's where our secret weapon comes in, the range function. Think of it as the ultimate instruction manual for your loops. Let's start with the basics. You've probably seen something like this, for i in range. Now, inside these parentheses, that's where we give range its orders. See that 10? That's telling range function to generate a sequence of numbers starting from 0. Yes, 0 is the default starting point, all the way up to, but not including 10. So it'll give us 10 numbers in total. Now, let's complete our loop, colon, indent, and let's just print the value of i each time. Print i. Go ahead and run this. What do you expect to see? Boom! Exactly as we planned. Range 10 is the shorthand for starting at 0 and going up to, but not including the number 10. Now, let's say we don't want to start at 0. No problem. Range can take a second parameter. Let's type 2, 10. See that comma? That separates the start value from the end value. Now, our loop starts at 2 and goes up 2, but doesn't include 10. Run that. See? We're in control. We told it exactly where to start. Let's try another one. Change that to 515. What will this print? Think about the starting point and the ending point. Exactly. 5, 6, 7, all the way to 14. Now, for the real power move, range function can take a third parameter. Let's add another comma and a 2. This third parameter is the step. It tells range how many numbers to skip each time. So, we're starting at 2, going up to 10, but we're only taking steps of 2. Run it. Notice what happened. We started at 2, then jumped 2 steps to 4, then to 6, and finally to 8. We stopped before 10, because we don't include the end value. Let's try another step. Change it to 1, 11, 3. Think about where we start, where we end, remember, not including, and how big our jumps are. Nice. 1, then jump 3 to 4, jump 3 again to 7, jump 3 again to 10. We don't go to 13 because that's past our endpoint of 11. Now, here's a cool trick. What if we want to go backwards? Can we do that with range function? Absolutely. Let's try 10, 0, comma, negative 1. Notice the negative step. This means we're counting down. We start at 10, go down 2 but not including 0 in steps of minus 1. Run that. Boom. Counting down. This is incredibly useful for all sorts of things. Let's push this a bit further. Try 5, comma, negative 5, comma, negative 2. Where do we start? Where do we end? What's our step? Exactly. 5, then down, 2 to 3, down 2 to 1, down 2 to minus 1, down 2 to minus 3. We stop before minus 5. OK, let's solidify this with some questions. Suppose you want to print every other number between 10 and 20 inclusive. How would you structure your range? Think about the start, the end, and the step. We start at 10. We need to include 20, so our end needs to be one more than 20, which is 21 and we want every other number, so a step of 2. Pause the video and try yourself. So, for i in range, 10, 21, 2. Print i. Run it. Perfect. One final thought experiment. What happens if your start value is greater than your end value, and you have a positive step? Let's try for i in range, and 10, 5, 1. Print i. What do you expect to see? Run that. Nothing. Range is smart. If you're telling it to go from 10 to 5 by adding 1 each time, it knows that's impossible and just gives you an empty sequence. This can be important to remember when debugging your loops. So, there you have it. The range was function isn't just about counting, it's about precise control over your loops. Mastering these three parameters, start, stop, and step, unlocks a whole new level of power. Now you can tell your loops exactly what to do. 
whether it's counting forward, backwards, skipping numbers, or iterating through lists in specific ways. Keep experimenting with different values. Try combining range with your while loops too. The possibilities are endless. You've already tackled the basics of loops, and now you've got this awesome tool in your arsenal. Go out there and build some amazing things. And in the next video, we'll explore even more advanced looping techniques. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out.